and welcome to the Tao of Our Understanding Recovery Podcast. My name is Omar Pinto, the host of the Share Podcast and a founding member of the SRC, the Share Recovery Community. In the SRC, we have a number of live online recovery meetings every week on a number of different topics. This podcast is only one example of the content provided to our members. In this meeting, a chapter of the Tao Te Ching is discussed every week as to how it relates to recovery. I hope you enjoy this week's podcast episode. Good morning, everyone. Buddy C, this is our Tao Te Ching meeting for December 27th, 2018. Welcome, everyone. Hope y'all had a great Christmas and time with family and all those things. And have a, y'all have big New Year's plans coming up? Anybody doing any big parties or anything? Just we having always, people over. Just having folks over. Yeah, we we've got a party at the clubhouse, but I'm not. I, I may go, may not. Probably just stay here. Uh, that we call that amateur night, you know. So so we all stay off the roads. <laughs> <laughs> That's, um, I make sure the kids are where they're going to be and they keep their ass planted. You know, you do not get out on the road on New Year's Eve. You get where you're at by five or six and you stay there. But it's not safe. That's one of the most unsafe nights to be out on the road. But uh, I sound like an old man. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm only reminded when I say something like that or look in the mirror, you know. <laughs> Um, I'm going to go out driving and see how many times I can get breathalyzed in the one night. <laughs> pass, pass every single one of them. <laughs> I had a friend of mine that got sober and he got pulled over by the police and he says, "Officer, I'm not under. Uh, how did he? He's, he's very, you know, anal." And he said, uh, "I'm not under the influence of any uh, dr- alcohol or drug." He says. Well, sir, you're not supposed to be driving under influence of anything. That's what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> he was proud of himself. He's like, hey, that's what everybody does. You're you're acting normal now, you know. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, congratulations. Yeah. Uh, that's what my first sponsor told me my first year. He said, congratulations on doing what uh, the rest of the world does with no fanfare whatsoever, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no. Tell a normie you've got three months from not drinking. They're like, so what? Yeah, yeah. No. Okay. big deal. Yeah, big deal. You know. Yeah. But uh, we got a very good. Um, well, they're all good, but this is the t- we're going to be talking about the twenty fifth chapter today. Um, it's about. It's probably there. There may be more chapters later uh, that talk about this, but one thing this chapter talks about is. Uh, Really, a, l- a little bit of Taoist creation. You could you could read that into it, and uh, about just the greatness of the Tao. Uh, and I heard um, uh, Wayne Dyer quote Alan Watts. He said that uh, something to the effect of, "You can call water anything you want to call it, but it still doesn't make you wet by what you call it." You know, and God is God no matter what name you put on God until you experience God. It doesn't matter the name that you place on God, whether it's Tao, God, Jesus Christ, Jehovah, higher power, Allah, whatever the name you want to put is not important. What's important is that we learn to experience God. So that's what's important, and that's that's part of what this is really talking about today. Um, and I really got a lot out of Wayne Dyer today on this. So let's just get started. Um, Cindy, if you would, please, uh, just read, will you read the four translations that we start with, please? Yep. Um, something mysteriously formed, born before heaven and earth, in the silence and the void, standing alone and unchanging ever present and in motion perhaps it is the mother of 10,000 things i do not know its name call it tao or dao sorry for lack of a better word i call it great being great it flows i flow it flows far away having gone far it returns therefore dao is great 
great. Heaven is great. Earth is great. The king is also great. These are the four great powers of the universe, and the king is one of them. Man follows earth. Earth follows heaven. Heaven follows the Tao. Tao follows what is natural. There was something formless and perfect before the universe was born. It is serene, empty, solitary, unchanging, infinite, eternally present. It is the mother of the universe. For lack of a better name, I call it the Tao. It flows through all things inside and out and returns to the origin of all things. The Tao is great. The universe is great. Earth is great. Man is great. These are the four great powers. Man follows the earth. Earth follows the universe. The universe follows the Tao. The Tao follows only itself. Before the universe was born, there was something in the chaos of the heavens. It stands alone and empty, solitary and unchanging. It is ever-present and secure. It may be regarded as the mother of the universe. Because I do not know its name, I call it the Tao. If I, if forced to give it a name, I would call it great. Because it is great means it is everywhere. Being everywhere means it is eternal. Being eternal means everything returns to it. Tao is great. Heaven is great. Earth is great. Humanity is great. Within the universe, these are the four great things. Humanity follows the earth. Earth follows heaven. Heaven follows the Tao. The Tao follows only itself. And here's the last one. Sorry. Something perfect has existed forever, even longer than the universe. It's a vast, unchanging void. There's nothing else like it. It goes on forever and never stops, and everything else came from it. I don't know what else to call it, so I'll call it Tao. What's it like? I can tell you this much. It's great. So great that it endures. Something that endures goes a long way. And something that goes a long way always comes back to the beginning. Tao's great. Heaven's great. Earth's great. And someone in touch with Tao is great, too. Those are the four greatest things in the universe. Someone who's in touch with Tao is in touch with the Earth. The Earth, earth is in touch with Heaven. Heaven's in touch with Tao. Tao's in touch with the way things are. To be light on your feet. Oh, oh, was that it? That was it. it. Thanks. Okay. Any, any comments? Any parts of that that uh, speaks to you? It's all connected. Yeah. The, like the the connection between the Tao and the Earth and humanity and the heaven, like it's all interconnected. Yeah, what, what jumped out to me was the start of the Old Testament. Uh, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So it could be the same as the Tao. Mm-hmm. Tao created heaven, heaven created the earth, earth created man. So there's, there's like a progression from, from... It was formless and void. Was that how the, the um, James reads or something? Yeah, and, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit okay. of God moved uh, upon the face of the waters. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I like that in the second, the second stanza there where it says, or in the second translation, the Mitchell translation where it says, it is serene, empty, solitary, unchanging, infinite, eternally present. That's not the description I would give to a higher power. Empty? Why would I? I would not think of a higher power as being empty. I would think of a higher power as being full. Your higher power is a vessel. Your higher that, that's back to that thing that is teaching us that the value is in the uh, is in the emptiness. You know, mm-hmm. the usefulness is yeah. in in the emptiness. So, serene, empty, solitary, unchanging, infinite and eternally present. Eternally present. That feels comforting to me. Like, yeah. I feel good about that. Like, that seems like a really good higher power. It does, doesn't it, Kate? Yeah. I mean, how, how many of us, when we were, when, when y'all... I, I'm trying to. Ch- Omar got on to me. I got to change my 
vernacular, instead of calling it the program, because it is not the program, okay? Yes. <laughs> it is a program, okay? Talking about AA, okay? Because you just talk, you just talk the program, the program, you know, when you're in meetings, you're just, that's just what's said, it, but uh, I know there's a lot more ways to sobriety than just AA, but when I started AA, I'll just say, instead of the program, um, I was uh, I was asked to write down what I thought my higher power was. Were y'all asked that? Was that part of your going yes. through the first, second, and third steps? Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Um, write down what you thought of your higher power. And, and this was not my higher power. Definitely not empty. Unchanging, yes, but in a bad way. what i also like about it is that they've created an order to this where um um man is great Tao is great heaven is great earth is great but it goes from from man to heaven to earth to the Tao. you know in four stages of greatness there's an order to it and there's an order to the universe as well. Stephen Mitchell addresses that in his commentary. The order? Yeah, he says the four stages. This says the four uh, great powers. And this is repeated, he said, in the 51st chapter. Uh, the Tao gives birth to all beings, nourishes them and maintains them, cares for them, comforts them and protects them, and takes them back to itself. He says that the words there for the progression mean this, that we see them as the words as, um, what are they here? Uh, Man follows earth, earth follows the universe, the universe follows the Tao. Okay. The Tao follows only itself. Okay, yeah, Tao, universe, earth, man. Okay, so he says that means... The Tao is the Tao giving birth to all things. The universe is the Tao nourishing and maintaining everything. Earth is the man caring, is is the Tao caring uh, for them, comforting them, and protecting them. And then man would be he takes them back to himself. Is how he tra- he sees that as the cycle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I never would have thought in a higher power, the uh, empty I wouldn't have thought, solitary, yes, serene, I don't know. God seemed mad a lot. My higher power seemed mad. In all fairness, look what he has to put up with. Yeah. Maybe he seemed mad because I was mad. I don't know. I think so. Yeah. I um pretty early in recovery, someone had told me that, and I don't know if it's true for men and women, but they, someone had shared with me that they had read about, for women, your, your, con, your concept of God is determined by your relationship with your father or affected by it. And so if you had an angry father or you had a very poor relationship, it somehow makes it harder or it changes your perception of what God could be. And you have to kind of separate that out and then create your own concept. Hmm. Well, that's really interesting, because I think your parents are your first uh, view of God, or your, the first people you look up to as God. Right. Both and so parents. they can skew that. And my view of God from church growing up was anything I did was more out of fear than anything. I didn't do anything out of love. It was out of fear. It was a fear-based belief. I yeah, don't burn in hell. Something wrong with that, don't you think? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> Babies are not born sinners, you know? You kids are not sinners. It's, yeah, see, I think mine was out of guilt. Every, every decision was what to do to not feel guilty, or you already were supposed to feel guilty just because you're breathing. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're guilty because you're, breath- you're breathing. You're breathing air. Yeah. Someone else could be breathing. You should be right. guilty. Feel guilty yeah. for that. Yeah. Don't be taking up space, Cindy. That other person. Yeah. Other for real, Cindy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See? <laughs> now you understand me. 
<laughs> um, serene. No, I thought him as mad. Empty, anything but empty. Solitary, yes. He was solitary because no one was as great as he was. Uh, unchanging, yes, in a bad way. Infinite, yes. Eternally present, I had no concept of what that meant. I still don't. Mm -hmm. I have a glimpse, but not a concept, really, of what eternally present would mean. I think it means walking with the Tao, being just being with the Tao. Yeah. Just being, period. Being, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's, it's uh, moving from, what is it, having to doing to being, to just being. I would, I would read into that, that he's always there. It doesn't matter what you're going through, good or bad, he's, he's always there. And you go through bad, you go through bad times as well to, to strengthen your character, strengthen your resolve. And just because you think he's not there doesn't mean to necessarily say that he's not. Um that's, that's my take on him being eternally present. Um, and I, I think a lot of times you have to, you have to stand on your own two feet at times as well um, and not just expect, expect God to do things for you or your higher power or the Tao just to do things for you. Um, sometimes you have to do things for yourself. And I think that's really why, why, why his class is empty as well. We can't humbly ask him to do things for us if he's full of everybody else's shit. And he needs to have space for, for everybody else. And I, I think um, one of the biggest things that I take out of the Dow meetings is just letting things pass, letting things go, taking what you need and then letting the rest of it go. Um, and I think if your higher power is constantly full of everything that you give him, um, then I think you, you, well, if, you, if you think that he's maybe full of everything, then he, then he might not have any more time for you. So you stop relying on your higher power and you become more drawn to yourself. So I think if you if you remember him as a, as an empty vessel, just like just like we're supposed to be, then you can rely more on him. Their end of the sermon. How about you guys? How how have your how has your higher power, your description, your your thought of a higher power changed when you? Uh, came into recovery and as you've progressed i don't know the mind has changed so much i think uh it's good um well I, I don't really you know have one my you know i grew up uh, thinking you know god's a man with a beard in the sky right um and that god is in everything in in the jewish religion we pray to god and thank him for everything mm -hmm. um but you know as i grew older i never I used God like, God, if you get me out of this, I'll be better, you know, that type of thing. But nothing that was ever watching with me or, 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 or hanging out with me. And I still, I just, I do believe in the order of the universe and the order of nature. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of a higher power. See, it goes on down to say here, Marla, that it, the Tao flows through all things. Mm -hmm. inside and outside and returns to we we return to in turn return to the origin of all things and that the Tao is in all things so yeah i really uh i can see that um yeah god in his own, it's the same thing god is in all things the trees the the, the tree roots the cement everything it's the same it's the same Mm -hmm. And it puts you in your place, isn't it? It's, it's humbling. Yeah, it, it takes you from thinking that you're this almighty being and you're, 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 the, you're the king of the universe. And I think reading into this, it's like, no, you're, you're the man. And then we're, it's the, just, uh, we're just a part of it. We're just a part of it. We just, we just a small part of it. Um, yeah. But I think it's also good that we're part of, I mean, it makes me feel good that I am part of that. You know, I think if the Tao is this great thing, which it is, and we are part of that great thing, then that gives us some value, too. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. You, you know, know what? we can get some 
that gives me comfort to be part of this great thing. I mean, I'm not like, uh, I don't want to get like overly self-confident about myself, but also I can feel good that I am a piece of this big force, like this life force that is in everything. I'm part of that. Yeah. You, you know, that's, that's very similar to the teaching from, from, a, from a Christian perspective, the body of Christ. Is that, that's the same kind of teaching in that we're part of the body. If we look at it more collectively, that we're all part of this collective body. And we think about how our body operates, that we get our body gets value. I mean, my finger, if I cut my finger off, it's of no value, really, out, outside of the body. But the finger being attached is part of the body. That's how it finds its value. Right. So <laughs> if we think collectively in the same way that we get our value, from being part of this collective body of the Tao, then that gives us value. We are supposed to, it's like humans, the way we evolved, we're, we are apparently supposed to be here along with all the other, you know, things that go on in nature, like, you know, the amoebas and elephants, we're supposed to be here. I just think we, you know, as humans, with our, our thinking, our consciousness, we kind of mess things up. And it's the how do, how do we, with consciousness, remain with the Tao all day? Therein lies the human dilemma. Well, and I think the key with that, Marla, is to stay connected. Yes, because, absolutely. Because but, what we do is that I think that when I start thinking independently that it's all about me, then I lose sight. My value comes when I'm helping the body. When I'm thinking as part of this body, I get no value by thinking independently. <laughs> <laughs> you know, really, when you think about it, if you think about it as being part of the body, uh, the body of the universe, whatever body of the Tao, whatever name you want to put on it, then you get no value by going and running off doing your own thing. You only get value. And, and think about this. If you're, the fing if you're a finger, you only get nourishment when you're connected to the body. You don't get <laughs> nourishment when you're off doing your own thing. <laughs> and your nourishment comes from the body. So it all comes from these other, how many times have I, needed something or need or felt had some issue and I would go to a meeting and hear someone say what I needed. I never hear those things from God. I hear them from other people. Okay. Same deal. Just like us sitting here, we hear what we need from the other people around us. That's being connected to the body. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, that's, uh, you know, there's so many, uh, now you could go a million directions with that, you know, uh, but, uh, but yeah, it's about being part of this collective body is where we get our value. Uh, we get our purpose, we get our nutrition, we get all, everything we need from everyone else. I gotta write that down. Um, Okay, anything else from this, right, before we go to the commentaries, the other commentaries? Um, I liked at the end of the um, the modern translation, the fourth one, where he says that the, uh, the Tao's in touch with the way things are. Uh, I see acceptance in that. Yes. So the Tao is in touch with the way things are. The Tao follows what is natural. Yes. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any other good quotes in here that uh, really spoke to me. Um, we talk about eternally present. 
Yeah, that's that was the big ones that jumped out. We see the results of the Dow. We do not understand the Dow. We just see the results of it. So I wish we had another name other than a he. We call God he, which is so limited. We really don't. You know, that's part of, we've talked about this before, Marla, and the Jewish tradition, you know, they don't even say, you know, many don't even say the name of God, you know. Uh, and I just, uh, I wish there were some, because he is all we have. Yeah, it's all we have. Lower, you know, and then, you know, so I, I just, uh, I would, I wish we had some uh, prefix that, or some way, you know, to say that. But I guess that's why I just say in Tao, if you think about it, is, is can be higher than that or higher power, whatever. Uh, okay, let's, uh, any comments before we read the commentaries? Mm-hmm. Craig? So, yeah, I, I just noticed that, I, I just noticed, I know we've been talking about this for the past 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so, everything's great. I, I don't mean everything, everything is great, but it's saying um, Tao is great, heaven is great, earth is great, humanity is great. So it's kind of putting everything on the same level. There's not a, there's, there's not a scale of greatness. Thank goodness. Okay. I'm just, glad, I'm just glad the elephant wasn't on that. The, the elephant was great as well. <laughs> I'm glad it's great. Well, great. The same level. Yes. <laughs> oh dear. No, but I, 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 I thought looking at this, there would be your higher power would be greater than yourself, mm-hmm. rather than everything being on on the same level. Um, maybe that's maybe that's what you were talking about, buddy, taking things from everybody else, and um, everybody's the same. And... Well, part of this body, so it is all the same. You did ask. That's that's like I was just. That's good, Craig. No, no, that's good. I I hadn't realized that. Hmm. Yeah, they're all great. Yeah, there's there's not there's there's not the Tao is the greatest of all. They're all the Tao. Yeah. So that could go back to last the the last verse where it's saying uh, if you if you're overstretching if you're overreaching maybe it's saying the Tao doesn't overreach itself either. It doesn't force itself on everybody and it just it just is it's just it's just the way the same as we are mm-hmm. 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 Hmm. that's good craig thank you so you got the uh, Derek lynn commentary yep. yep so the Derek lynn translation for the 25th verse is, there is something formless created, born before heaven and earth, so silent, so ethereal, independent and changeless, circulating and ceaseless. It can be regarded as the mother of the world. I do not know its name. Identifying it, I call it Tao. Forced to describe it, I call it great. Great means passing. Passing means receding. Receding means returning. Therefore, the Tao is great. Heaven is great. Earth is great. The sovereign is also great. There are four greats in the universe, and the sovereign occupies one of them. Human follows the laws of earth. Earth follows the laws of heaven. Heaven follows the laws of Tao. Tao follows the laws of nature. So what I found interesting about that is the he uses the word circulation. So basically, it's, it's going around and it's coming around, and it keeps, so it takes us back to that cyclical nature of things that we've spoke about before. Um, just like the seasons, there's always going to be a winter, spring, summer, autumn. Um, the notes that he's got on those readings are we say that the Tao was before heaven and earth because the principles that allowed for the universal creation are aspects of the Tao whether creation is a result of divine will or the interaction of natural forces it has to follow a certain set of rules therefore the Tao had to exist before anything else the very fact that we exist is proof that the Tao must also exist the paragraph you're reading now expresses an idea that exists that expression would not be possible without grammatical rules. Similarly, our existence is a physical expression written in the universal language of the Tao. 
Um, ba -ba -ba. So yeah, that's that's base, basically saying that there was something before the Earth, um, which takes us back to that higher power or gods. Doubt is merely a name, really nothing more than a label. Ancient sages readily admitted that they knew little about it, but they could see that its function manifested in circular patterns everywhere, from a spherical raindrop to majestic sweeps of galaxies. Now, I, 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 while I was reading that, I wrote down the word sovereign, because sovereign over in the UK obviously means, um, like, the rulers, so like the kings and queens, because we, we, have, we, we have a monarch system in place over in the UK. Um, the sovereign is a natural leader who is congruent with the Tao. Such leaders can serve as examples for the people at any level of society. The sovereign can also mean you. If you recognise your birthright to have absolute power over your life, as the owner of your destiny, you can direct it in any way you see fit. All you need is realisation and willingness to aspire to greatness. We'll come back to that one. <laughs> The, the cosmos is an orchestrated symphony on many levels. On Earth, human beings follow the laws of the land in which they live. The Earth itself follows the laws of astronomy, the rules that govern the, the motions of heavenly bodies. The universe as a, whole, as a whole follows the pattern of the Tao at a macroscopic level. Ultimately, the Tao itself follows natural laws, which arises from the Tao process thus underscoring the self-completeness of the Tao. So when he was talking about the, the, the sovereign is great, the sovereign is natural leader who is congruent with the Tao. Um, I wasn't expecting it to go to say that um, you're the owner of your own destiny. I've always kind of believed that it was you, you, you're there for a purpose and that purpose is just for you to do, not, to, not for you to choose your own direction and do it. Um, the direction you, you you choose is really the direction that you're given. Um, and I think that was I think that was pretty true of my addiction as well. Um, I got out of my addiction because that was the that, that was that was the, the road that I that I didn't choose to go down that road. That was the road that I was led. Um, and I, I, th I think there's a couple of people that I've I've spoken to as well have that um, that opinion as well. I'm not the master of my own destiny. My destiny is laid out before me, and it's, it's my job just to walk that path. And um, I don't have the option that I can get off it. It's um, it's, it's predestined. Yeah, uh, you'll hear Derek Lynn in several of his commentaries. Um, he, do, I don't think he really buys into that. Uh, I do too, Craig. That's what I think. I think that if I could have behaved any different, I would have. And uh, it, uh, I, I think there's some, you know, I, I go, I go that. I don't, I don't really want to debate, you know, whether that's the case or not. But um, uh, actually, Omar and I have this conversation quite often. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, well, we have too, Kurt and Craig. You know, we've all talked about this. You know, uh, but um, I think that uh, I think my path is laid out before me. And I think it's I think it's a path of I think there's some flexibility there, but I think we can look at nature as what's governing our path, you know. And yes. our path is a lot the same the same way, maybe. I don't know. Um, you know, it's uh, that's so far beyond my pay grade. I mean, <laughs> well, all the angst that we've created for ourselves is because we're trying to go against nature. So. You know, I don't think really, if you think, you know, I used to think will of God kind of thing, right? Where, okay, you know, the will of God would be like a task list kind of thing where, yeah. you know, okay, turn right, no left, no right, left, you know, that. <laughs> no, um, I was reading, actually, this is New Testament. I was reading and it, uh, it was talking about what Jesus did and he said, he went about doing good. And I was like, okay, well, maybe the will of God for me is a lot the same. That I'm just, I need to go about doing good, do what's in front of me to do, do what comes natural, 
like we were talking about, Marla, doing the next right thing, whatever that, whatever is, that is, you know, and using that, uh, you just a net, net, the next right thing would be uh, what the will of God, so to speak, would be for me. And it, maybe it's not as much tied up into a, you know, a specific thing for me to do. It's just for me to practice. <clears throat> it's just for me to practice um, following my higher power and whatever I'm doing. I don't know. You know, mm-hmm. that's kind of where I've left. I've tried to make it much more simple than I used to make it. It used to be very complicated, but it gets simpler and simpler. Is that a word in Scotland? Simpler? Yep, it's like good, gooder and goodest. Gooder and gooder, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's, a prog- there's, there's a progression of goodness, good, gooder, and goodest. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> what about good I ask, Craig? I have to delete that out of the recording. <laughs> hey, Craig, what about footnotes? Fruit loops. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Anything else on the Derek Lynn before we move to the Wayne Dyer? Okay. You want to help us with that, Marla? Oh, sure. Uh, 25th verse. There was something formless and perfect before the universe was born. It is serene, empty, solitary, unchanging, infinite, eternally present. It is the mother of the universe. For lack of a I'll call it the Tao. I call it great. Great is boundless. Boundless is eternally flowing, ever flowing. It is constantly returning. Therefore, the way is great. Heaven is great. Earth is great. People are great. Thus, to know humanity, understand earth. To know earth, understand heaven. To know under to understand to know heaven, understand the way. To know the way, understand the great within yourself. And here's the. I'll just read a few paragraphs of the commentary. Living with greatness. Many of the scholars who've written about the Tao Te Ching over the centuries consider the 25th verse to be one of the most significant lessons in the entire manuscript. In my research, all the translations of this passage actually include the word great to describe it. This verse tells the story that even before the beginning, there existed something formless and perfect. It goes on to say that this formless perfection is the mother of the universe. Even though it's nameless, it's called the Tao, and it's synonymous with what is great. That is, there, there's nothing within the Tao that is the opposite of great. There's nothing that's puny, insignificant, weak, unimportant, or even average. The story appears to want the reader to realize there's a pure timeless energy that's within everything on the planet and that remains uncontaminated by the solid solid appearance of form. The conclusion is a directive to the student, who is you, the reader. To know this formless perfection, you must understand the great within yourself. You are the central character in this wonderful saga. All right. (laughs) You must know yourself. Understand, understand understand the great within within, yourself. Within yourself. And, you know, for an alcoholic, an addict in recovery, that's sometimes really hard to find is the greatness within ourselves. Got that right. Yeah. Ever flowing, it is constantly returning. Hmm. Cyclical again. It's always. Everything is. Everything. Cyclical. Yeah. Look at the, uh, you know, water and rain condensing the whole, we learned in, what, third grade. Earth and death. Yeah, exactly. Four seasons. You know, and, and we've talked before about the cycles in relationships, the cycles in jobs, the you know, about <clears throat> everything's in this birth, life, death cycle. And we've got to not hold on to things that die, you know, that we let them die so that something new can be born. And we hold on to dead things all the time. And, <laughs> uh, 
dry and stinky and of no good to us whatsoever, but we keep holding on. When there's something better for us, if we'll just let go, because we can't hold on to something new if we're still, uh, we can't uh, grasp something new if we're still holding on to something else. You can't do both at the same time. Doesn't seem to work. No. Um, he talks a lot in this about living from being greatness. You can begin to do so living this by examining thoughts and ideas that are inconsistent with this phenomenal observation. In other words, ways that we're not practicing greatness. That we've, we've got this greatness within us. Why are we practicing puniness and insignificance and weakness and averageness, being unimportant, when we've got this greatness, as as Craig put, that it was in that it's in every stage, you know, universe, earth, man, Tao, they're all in this great stage. Why are we settling for anything less than great? Um, um, everybody's told us. Yeah. Society, our parents, our family, our friends. I think it's. I think we've got to look inward for that answer too, Marla. It's more uh, inward. It has to be inward. You know, I, how, for me, it it it's down to fear. A lot of it's fear. Why do I allow fear to steal that greatness from me? Hmm? Fear of failure. It does. It seems like humans. We're all. We're all so fearful. If, you know, if people actually became aware and, and conscious of what motivates them and, um, you know, I, I know in every fourth step I've ever done, it always comes down to fear. That's the, the basis of everything is fear. Pride and fear. Yeah. And why? Well, and pride, a lot of times for me, Kurt, comes from fear. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I've been learning a lot of this from this darn letting go book <laughs> because Dern. it's all about it's a, it's a, all it is is a giant fourth step really i mean yeah. it really is about getting down to the causes and conditions you know and the, I, if anyone has not read that book it's letting go pathway surrender david hawkins i know we're going to start our meeting on it um, um a week from monday actually so uh, I am really excited about it, but I am learning so much because uh, I'm getting down to some things that I was not aware was there. If you had asked me six months ago, did I have any fear? I would say, no, not really. I'm not a very fearful person. I didn't know that I still had that, these deep bedded fears. These deep bedded fears that were really dominating my life. And I have so much fear that I can't do anything. I'm not just not sure where that fear, where, well, I know where it's coming from. But, you know, I'm in, I'm in between jobs. So I can't figure out what, what to do. And it's because of fear that nothing's it's coming. Come, to, it's come up for me. Good. It's come up for me a lot lately of very, very subtle, subtle things. Um, say, for instance, meeting... Uh, getting to know a, 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 a woman, um, and and I say things like it doesn't, oh that it doesn't matter, um, when, it, when, when actually it really does matter. Um, but I'm I'm really protecting myself from 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 rejection, from from being hurt, from all of these little subtle things, and it comes up it comes up in my work in the workplace. Um, I, I thought I was done with the fear. Um, I feel more brave than, than, or braver than ever before when I realized I was a complete coward in, in addiction, in active addiction. Because there's things that just don't scare me anymore that, that they used to, but it's still there. And it's really, it's interesting how it plays out. Very subtle. Um, it, it shows up in my motives. And huh. My motives are very, 
they look from the outside. I can wrap them up in a big, pretty red bow, but there's there's some underlying ugliness there. It's it's really interesting and subtle, and I really think that that book is 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 a, a way out. I mean, I'm looking forward to it too. Um, Omar's podcast yesterday, they mentioned uh, that was it Sheila. Sheila. Yeah, she mentioned David Hawkins also. So that that name keeps coming up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you introduced me to that book, Kurt. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you got me back into it because I read it. I mean, I read it nine, ten months ago. Put it on the shelf, and now it's starting to affect me differently as I'm listening to it as I commute. You know, so. Yeah, I'm in my second time around with the book, and I can now. I'm actually listening to it. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I think really this is, uh, I had a similar experience with drop the rock, um, having a meeting. Uh, we had a local in-person meeting where we met at somebody's house and we read it and we would read like a paragraph or two. And then, then everybody would have their turn and you just get so much out of it. And this book is going to be really helpful to do that. I think. Yeah. It actually has tools. Yeah. It tells you how to do it. So, you know, it's so easy. <laughs> it's so easy. It's simple. Well, it's <laughs> very, very, it's two paragraphs, you know. Right. <laughs> just surrender to the fucking thing. Whatever it is, you just surrender to it. <laughs> right. That's all you do. It's one sentence, really. <laughs> just surrender. Okay. It comes up again. Surrender again. Yeah. You got a fear of failure? Surrender to the fear of failure. Okay. Comes up again, do it again. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> it's that control, too. That's where – and the control is is coming from fear. Yeah. Um, you know, I want to control the outcome of, of – say, for, it's just fresh in my mind, sorry, like in the, the past 48 hours of this woman that I met. And, and, it, and I want to already control things um, and just outcomes. You know, I want things to go the way they, they, that I think they should go all of a sudden. And maybe that is not the way it should go. Maybe, no. you know, maybe th- this woman is not for me at all. Um, you know, m- maybe the, the, the experience of, of getting to know her is all that, that, that this is about. But it's funny how it, things kick in that I thought I dealt with, and it's just it's really interesting. <laughs> then I'm not present, which I going back to what you guys were talking about in the 25th verse. When you read the Wayne Dyer stuff, I got, I also got being present out of it because I can't do those things if I'm not present. I've really got to work on it, and if I am thinking about the future, whether it be this woman or my business or whatever it is. I'm not present, <clears throat> and that's when I start start suffering. Mm-hmm. So that's good. That's good, Kurt. Totally um, get it. You know, and and it, it is really. I'll, I'll go back to the traits that we saw. What was that? Um, serene, empty. I guess what we make it say. In any situation, am I being serene? Am I being empty? You know, and if any, am I being present? You know, if those, whatever those traits, character traits of the Tao would apply, you know, for me, a lot of it is being empty and being present is a lot of it, you know, um, And am I being that in whatever situation is going on? And that's part of what Wayne Dyer was talking about was, you know, the parts of my life that I am not applying, that that I'm allowing something less than greatness to stay in my life. Maybe if we looked at ways in our life that we were allowing, we had things in our life we hadn't surrendered that we know should not be there. And you start surrendering those things like fear, pride, ego, those character defects that we tolerate that keep us from greatness, that block, like the clouds that block the sun, you know? Yep. Sun shining the whole time. 
not doing us any good because the clouds are in the way. Get rid of that stuff. He says a couple of other things I want to quote real quick before we close. It's crucial for you to become conscious of the greatness that constantly flows through you. To do so, meet it in meditative moments of gratitude and cease to be influenced by contrary points of view. So he's saying meditate uh, and contemplate gratitude? Yes. In your meditation. Contemplate gratitude and then be aware when you're being negatively influenced. Sounds easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I will laugh at that. Recently, I've just started, I, I can't remember the book, Love Your, oh, Love Yourself Like Your Life Depends On It. <clears throat> Obviously, coming in, I mean, I had a horrible bottom and hurt some people and, and some things, and, and um, so I wasn't loving myself, and that's been really the challenge in, in three and a half years of recovery, <clears throat> but um, I, I'm doing a meditation that this book suggests. And it's about a seven minute meditation where I, that's all I say. I love myself and I breathe in. I love myself and whatever comes out, comes out. And, um, it's, it's really interesting, but the meditation I think is key. I think you're right, Marla. I mean, I, meditation is the way out for me. Way out. The way out. Yes, sir. Now Wayne Dyer has, has, um, a little more here. Uh, he talks about trusting your own greatness. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has an affirmation that he uses. I came from, I come from greatness. I attract greatness. I am greatness. That's the affirmation that he, uh, that he uses with this. Um, You can't do that without loving yourself. Yeah. I get what I think about, whether I want it or not. Now, doing the Tao, copy the following words and apply them to yourself. I came from greatness. I must be like what I came from. I will never abandon my belief in my greatness and the greatness of others. Read these words daily, perhaps by posting them conspicuously where you can see them. They will serve to remind you of the truth of your own greatness. Meditate for 10 minutes today, focusing on your inner greatness. I'll tell you what I did. I made some affirmations. Okay. <laughs> when I did this, I, I, I studied this last week. Right after this, I've been working on this all week. Uh, the great one lives in me, abides in me. I attract greatness. The great one loves through me. Um, then I went to love. Love lives in me. Love lives through, and I went through the different points in me. Like love lives through my thinking. Love lives through what I see through what I say, through what my hands do, I attract love. You know, then love love lives in my steps today and in my work. And I repeated that for love, for forgiveness. You know, forgiveness lives in me. Forgiveness lives through my thoughts today and all that and understanding. I use those three. Uh, was what I use for my affirmation. So, uh, then I use the Tao itself. The Tao lives in me. All my actions share the Tao with others. I track the Tao in everything I see. I track the Tao in every interaction. And I just repeated the the Tao part, especially in my meditation while I was meditating, and trying to to just realize that this greatness is available to us and we attract, you know, something else from this letting go book that reminded me was that we attract what we're, we attract what we're, uh, what we're presenting. You know, if we're, if we're 
loving people, we're going to attract love back. If we're operating in fear, we're going to get fear back or we're going to get a result of fear. You know, animals see that, like you're talking about the connectiveness, Marla. Dogs see that immediately. Mm -hmm. And people may not see it consciously, but they respond unconsciously to what, how we're behaving, you know, to what we're putting out, you know, to what we're, if we're, if we're working in fear, they're going to respond in fear, knowing or unknowingly. So, you know, that's why, you know, when we start working and, and uh, living in these higher levels of consciousness and we start, you know, really living out of love, then we start attracting love. So, um, this, this is just pointing in that direction. So I really like these affirmations. As a matter of fact, I added, I did these for a while and then I added one to my dailies, the, the Tao one I added to my daily affirmations that I do every morning in my meditation. So, um, but, uh, but this is a really good, really good chapter. Seems to be the basis, like a pivotal part, you know. I still haven't got my head around. I'd never thought about, the Tao, God, whatever name, as being empty. I mean, I know we read it and we know we're to be empty, but I never looked at being empty as a characteristic or a trait of God, to be empty. It's like it'd be the opposite. Well, the Tao, doesn't the Tao tell us to be empty? Yes, yes, so. oh, for sure. But but I'd never seen it as a. I mean I I just it had never registered, you know. Mm. Huh. Anything else, guys? No good no stuff good. today. Well, I want everyone to enjoy their week and enjoy their uh, New Year's. Have fun. Be safe. You too. Are we going to have a Tuesday morning meeting? Yes. Okay, good. Yes, Tuesday morning we'll be here. Um, but, uh, you know, there's plenty. If you have any issue, reach out. There's people everywhere. There's all kinds of folks online. There's We can do impromptu meetings. There'll be, you know, I know my local clubhouse has meetings all evening just stacked. So if you're in a, in a place and you're thinking about drinking, go hang out with some drunks that aren't drinking. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> I think of worse places to be. Yeah. New Year's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, but no, guys, y'all have a great week, and uh, I guess we'll take it from there. Happy New Year, everyone. Thanks. Hey, Happy New Year. <laughs>Thank you for listening to the Tao of Our Understanding Recovery Podcast. For more information about the SRC, go to the sharepodcast.com, share is spelled S H A I R, and look for the Share Recovery Community link. When you join the SRC, you will be able to participate in this meeting and many more live, plus access to a video library of past meetings and many more benefits for being a part of this growing community. Thanks again for listening, and if you enjoyed this episode, Please share this podcast with your friends in recovery.